Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. I'm the Scent Maven. Welcome back to my channel, Shopping in Scents. And we're going to be doing a walk down memory lane. So the boyfriend is being very considerate and he's letting me film this while he's trying to sleep. Um, so I'm in my bedroom. I am wearing, here's a sneak preview of one of my future uh, hauls. I'm wearing my Duran Duran shirt. Um, and so this made me want to get out um, this Foot Locker that I have. I have a hot pink Foot Locker, which is what you guys are propped up on right now. And in here, I have all my music memorabilia, all my programs from Broadway shows, um, and all kinds of interesting, fascinating stuff. And I haven't looked through this trunk in about almost two years since I moved into this apartment because this trunk used to be at the foot of my bed. But when I moved into the new apartment, the movers stuffed it into the closet and I just didn't know how I was going to get it out. So I don't go through this stuff very often. This is just my um, my collector's items, the things that I treasure uh, from the past, from musical uh, musical bands that I like and um, different shows that I've been to. And when I started looking through this, I decided that it was something that I wanted to share with you guys because I found some things that um, I just, you know, couldn't believe uh, were in here. Things that I have to take better care of, even though they're they're secure in this footlocker. Some stuff that I want to frame and... Yeah, so I am going to show you some stuff. So I know you're really appreciating the shoes in the background. This is not normally how I film, but so let's start off with the reason why I got out the trunk, which is Duran Duran. So I did see them at the PNC Bank Art Center. It took me a while to remember what the name of the venue was. Um, during the Pop Trash Tour. I haven't looked at this program in a while. Um, so it says on the back, DuranDuran.com. Um, it is a very weird program. But when I was looking through it, I found this amazing picture of Simon Le Bon. Um, well, I mean, I can show you guys. It's, 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 it's a very weird, it's a very weird program. Oh, there's Nick Rhodes. It's a great picture of Nick Rhodes. Um, so the picture of Simon Le Bon is even nicer. Oh my God. Yeah, there's some nudity in this. Uh, they they have a picture of Warren Cucurillo who joined the band later on. And uh, there's a it says he shares one of his Polaroid memories and it's actually him with the topless woman. Um, but there's the picture of the band. Uh, there's Simon Le Bon in the middle. So, where is the picture that I wanted to show you guys? Yeah, so I went to see them on this tour back in 2000. So this program is 20 years, over 20 years old. There's the picture of Simon Le Bon that I wanted to show you. Yeah, and um, so flashback for me there is so much stuff in this trunk that it probably would take two hours for me to show you everything um then I have some of my Broadway show programs and this is one of my favorites this is from La Caja Fall uh when Kelsey Grammer was in it and uh there was this um I mean oh, this is the little insert that they put in there when they change the actors um when they have people that uh get sick and stuff and okay so so there's kelsey Grammer, and i think what happened was if i remember correctly during this show there were times that he played the female role and other times when the other guy like they reversed roles i'm not sure but um this is a really nice program. It's one of my favorite Broadway shows. Um, and I'm not a Broadway person. It says, this is the one I wanted to show you. So it says, open your eyes, you have arrived at La Cajafo. 
so this was quite a number of years ago that he did this show i love kelsey grammar and i thought this was a great show and i'm so glad that i got a chance to go see it i can't remember if i saw this with the bad enabler or not i don't remember but I also found in here, when I went to see the Adams Family musical, when B.B. Newworth, who was also in Frasier, B.B. Newworth played Morticia Adams, and Nathan Lane, I believe, played Gomez. Look at this picture. So it was a really great show, and I'm glad I got a chance to see that as well. So then... I was wondering if this if this would be worth any money. Okay, so little side note about myself. Um, one of my hobbies in the past was meeting famous people, famous singers, famous actors and things. Um, I would go to autograph signings and shows and stuff. So this particular artist I got to see before... He passed away and I have a picture with him that we took together, which I do not have with me now, but I do have it somewhere on my phone. Um, so this is a folder from the College of Staten Island where they have an arts theater where they have different bands. I saw Crystal Gale there and I have a program signed by her, although it would be nice if her photo was on the program, but it says Love Crystal Gale, if you can read her handwriting. I saw Big Bad Voodoo Daddy there, and I have, a, I believe, a playbill signed by them, a program signed by them, but I can't read the person's handwriting. But anyway, so Davy Jones from the monkeys. This is the, okay, so this is in perfect condition in the College of Staten Island folder. This is on this side, the uh, flyer, perfect condition, signed by Davy Jones when he performed there. I saw him, he was incredible. I did not think that it was gonna be such a great show. Um, and then also he charged for the photos. I believe he charged $10 for the photos. I'm not quite sure. And um, yes, he signed that in front of me and I have the picture with him to prove it. So I'm just wondering now that he has passed on um, how much this might be worth. Not that I would ever sell it. It brings back a lot of wonderful memories for me. Um, so I'm gonna put that back in here. This is like my treasure box. Oh, I have to put that file back into this thing here, this file that fell out. Okay. So there are also, here's a, a playbill from the Adams family. Um, this, I did not like this show. I got dragged to see the Phantom of the Opera. I don't know what year this was. It says the longest running show in Broadway history. I can't imagine. I don't know why. This also has one of these addendums that they put in here over the actors. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in seeing this, how many of you guys like Phantom of the Opera. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I just didn't get it. I don't understand why I don't, I didn't, I did it and I still don't understand um, why people like that show. I have, I used to collect comic books. I don't anymore. Oh, here's the program. I think this was signed by the guy from Big Bad Voodoo Daddy because that's what, that's who was playing at the time. But I can't remember the guy's name and I took a picture with him and I just can't read this signature. So, um, that, now, of course, Malcolm is gonna make noise because somebody's making noise outside. Um, this is one of the old comic books that I collected. So the bad enabler and I have a, a running joke on this. I don't know if he has a copy of this as well. So this is supposed to be a spoof of the Punisher and it's called the Pummeler and there's rabbits coming out of his gun there. And it says in this issue, 
the pummeler kills small furry things. Oh, so it's got rabbits and cats and little duckies and stuff. So, yeah, that was one of my old comic books. I, I don't have any more of my comic books. I have actually, I wonder how much this is worth now. This is from a comic book shop that does not exist and has not existed for a very long time. Um, so I have the uh, Prince comic book and then I have the uh, comic book news from that particular shop announcing the uh, Prince comic book coming out. So I wonder what that's worth. Of course, like I said, these are all priceless things to me and I would never sell them. Um, funny stuff in here is, I don't know why this I put this in here. This is a Yankee Candle. Somebody would probably buy this on eBay. This is a Yankee Candle um, thing from Halloween 2014. Anyway, let's see what else is in here. I have... I have a lot of Depeche Mode uh, memorabilia, a lot. Um, I have a lot of White Stripes memorabilia, a lot of Beastie Boys. So I'll show you two of this I have to frame again. So I met, I met, uh, I don't have the, the, have the the large well actually okay i met dave gone from um depeche mode in person by himself when he was promoting his um solo album paper monsters and i have a eight by ten signed by him that's in a frame that's in probably in the garage somewhere not hanging up because i have no place to hang it up or i took it down and put it in my closet somewhere that picture, I never, I mean, for a man that I used to worship, I really don't take very care of, good care of that picture because I don't know where it is. Um, but I, what happened was when I went to see him uh, for the first time, I actually got online and met him twice. And I had him sign all kinds of things. I put all kinds of things in front of him to sign. And he was very gracious and he signed a lot of the stuff. Um, so... Like I said, I don't have the main photo that he signed, which is framed somewhere. But I do have this, um, which is amazing. Yeah, he signed. Well, there's a lot. I didn't even remember that this was in here. Okay. I try to keep this in as perfect condition as possible. This is Q Magazine. This is from England. This is stunning. And then also in here is the, I think I had him sign the, the CD, which I don't know where it is. I had him sign the, or was, it, was he signing this, the DVD? No, I don't know. This was the DVD thing. I, I don't know. So he signed this. Uh, and I had him sign the magazine. I had him sign an 8x10 photo of himself with the band. And this magazine is from June 2001. So 20 years ago. Um, then, I don't know where it is. But I met the entire band, minus Alan Wilder, because he was gone by that time. When they were promoting their album, Playing the Angel... And I had that signed somewhere. So when I went there, they were much more strict. Um, the people, it was at a record store, Tower Records, or I forget what record store it was, in Manhattan. I had seen him the first time by himself at a record store in Manhattan, but then at a different store later on when they had playing the Angel and they had the three members of the band, Dave Gunn, uh Martin Gore and Andrew Fletcher. They were strict in saying that they would only sign one item. And I was determined 
that if I ever met Martin Gore, that I would have him sign this magazine. So I had to find a way to have him sign it. So after, you know, they, they rush you through the line of, you know, get you through. Hi, how's it going? They sign and you, they push you out the door. Keep it, keep the line going. I took out the magazine and I slipped it in front of Martin Gore. And so this was maybe in 2000 something. And the magazine is from 1985. So if you're not familiar, Martin Gore used to do this whole gender bending thing where he would wear women's clothes and he doesn't do it anymore. But back then he did. And I love the, the cover of this um, magazine. So I don't think he likes remembering himself this way. Um, but the signature i put this in front of him and he didn't see it but dave gone it was dave gone martin gore andy fletcher and dave gone saw me push this in front of martin gore and he tapped him to look forward because he was looking to the side towards where andy fletcher was and uh he tapped him on the shoulder and he looked down and he saw this picture of himself from 1985 and he was he gave like a little chuckle and he signed it. So I, I, I did it. I said if I ever met him that I would have him sign this and I did. So I have to leave this out because I have to frame that properly. It wasn't a frame at one point, but it's not in a frame anymore. This is from the soundtrack to Leap of Faith. And this is Paradise by the Bad, by the Dashboard Light cassette single signed by Meatloaf, who I met in person. And I have a picture with him somewhere. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, this is some stuff that I should have framed hanging up. You can see in this blow up from June 22nd, 1985, that Martin Gore is not only wearing a dress, but he's got his nails painted black. So that's, that's the dress there. Um, let me see, I forgot I had half of this stuff. So here in this, we have a bag from Madison Square Garden. So what's in here? Oh, this is the Pesh Mode, the Exciter Tour. I forgot that I even went to see this. I, I went to every show that they did up until I, the last show. The last show that I watched them do was uh, Tour of the Universe. Playing the Universe, Tour of the Universe, something like that. Then I have this here, still from the Virgin Megastore. Look, still in the Virgin Megastore bag. This is when... Martin Gore did his solo album, which is very underrated, uh, Counterfeit Part 2. So, put that back in there. I have a lot of picture discs, um, programs, and autographs. So here we have, I don't know, if, see, if you guys are not into Depeche Mode, this is not going to be interesting to you. Um, oh, here it is. He, oh, I can't show you this. So, uh, Dave Gon signed. What is this? Is this? This is not Paper Monsters. This is. This is Hourglass. I don't know. I have a signature here from Dave Gon. Um, they wrote my name down on a post-it so that he could. Oh, I can't show you this. So when I went to see him, I don't remember this. They must have uh, asked me what my name was. They wrote it down on a piece of paper and they must have put it in front of him so he could sign very fast. And it, it's written to me, uh, to my name. And I don't remember ever doing that. So then we have this album of the Depeche Mode. It's called A Heart Extended. I want to say this is on blue vinyl. Why do I think this is on blue vinyl? Because it is. It's on blue vinyl. So. I have some other stuff in here. 
I don't want this to be the Depeche Mode show, but uh, here's one of their first record, Speak and Spell. This is a vinyl of Personal Jesus, which I, the last time I checked was the biggest selling single in Warner Brothers history. Here's the program from uh, Tour of the Universe. It's still in the bag. It doesn't, it just has the DM on it. So, we're already 20 minutes in. Congratulations to you guys if you have stayed with me this long. I wanted to show you some other stuff. I know I have other stuff in here. Okay, so this, this is Catching Up with Depeche Mode. This is not signed. This is in a sleeve. I bought this at a record shop. This was $22. I bought this at a record shop at on the day that I thought I was going to meet them for playing the angel. Um, and that's when I found out that they were only allowing one autograph per person. And that's when I got the, um, the album cover, the playing the angel CD cover signed and that, um, Martin Gore, uh, magazine signed, but I could not get this signed because they basically, they were like, okay, you, you're not even supposed to get that sec second signature you out of here. So they, they kind of pushed me out the door. I'm trying to find, this is like all the Pesh Mode stuff. What's this here? Record runner. What's in here? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a record store. I don't know where this was from. Look, I guess he did do gender bending past the 80s. This is the album for the single for Suffer Well from uh, Depeche Mode. And you can see that uh, I guess the, the reason that I bought this is Martin Gore is wearing a wedding dress. I guess Dave Gom is supposed to be the groom and I don't know Andy Fletcher looks like the uh the best man it's such an odd so odd I would open this up and see I don't want to mess it up I would see what color vinyl it is I know I have some Billy Idol stuff in here I was very very into Billy Idol as well so I've gotten into this section of all the Pesh Mode stuff and I don't know what, what this is. Oh, this is this is that Joan Rivers record um, that I have framed. I took the album out of the sleeve. I'm trying to find Oh my god. Alright, now I found some stuff. Okay. Remember when you can go to a record store? Then I got this not that long ago. This is Corey Hart. Remember Corey Hart? I wear my sunglasses at night. Oh my God. This is not that album. But, oh, I have to listen to that song again. I could hear it in my head. I wear my sunglasses at night. Oh, by the way, have you, if you've ever tried that? Wear your sunglasses at night. You know what happens? You can't see. So, yeah, Corey Hart. Oh my God. Corey Hart. This is amazing. I have some amazing stuff. I've lost a lot of stuff over the years. I told you guys that story where uh, when I moved out of my parents' house, my dad threw out a lot of my stuff. So I lost, I lost a Phil Collins program. I lost a Rolling Stones Voodoo Lounge program. I lost Billy Joel River of Dreams. I lost... Depeche Mode devotional tour, which was the first concert I ever went to of theirs. Yeah. Look at this one. Neil Diamond. I'm so glad I got to see him. 
Neil Diamond World Tour 2001-2002. This was, I mean, Neil Diamond is just, he's just the best. This is a postcard from 16 Candles. I don't know where I got this. Look, we got some Marilyn Manson picture disc from The Dope Show. If you guys don't know, um, well, I used to be into Marilyn Manson too. Um, there are uh, you can collect vinyl like these records you could play them they do play but if you're a collector they advise you not to play them this is made in the UK um, because if you if you scratch the record you scratch the picture and then it it becomes worthless well what we're not worth not completely worthless but worth less than it would be um so let's see what else is in here oh uh, yeah this is the the Joan Rivers album. It, this has two covers. This is the regular cover, and then I have the promo sleeve uh, framed. Then I have this is one of my prize records. This is Billy Idol White Wedding Limited Edition on white vinyl. This I should really have in a frame. I mean, this is pretty, pretty beautiful. And this, I have some more Billy Idol here. This is another record. Um, this is from the same store where I bought, uh, Corey Hart. This is Stacy Q. And you remember her big hit was Two of Hearts. This is not that record, but it's still Stacy Q when everybody wanted to look like Stacy Q. Uh, so this is Depeche Mode Goodnight Lovers, and this is on red vinyl. I can't show you, I don't think I could. I'm getting tired. It's already 27 minutes in of showing you everything that's in this box here. Um, this is this is marked $4.99. This is the Pesh Mode People Are People. This is just a regular album. This is the Pesh Mode 2005-2006 from the uh, Playing the Angel Tour. Then we have more more Depeche Mode vintage vinyl. Uh, picture discs. This is when Dave Don had his solo album. This is the only hit single, I think, and it wasn't even that big of a hit for uh, Dirty Sticky Floors, which I haven't listened to in a while. This is also some more Depeche Mode picture discs. And you can see uh, Martin Gore used to wear quite a bit of makeup. So did... Um, Nick Rhodes from Duran Duran. Uh, here we have Depeche Mode Violator. Um, this is the Spanish version of Violator. I mean the span the this the uh, what do you call it? The disc is a limited edition disc. I forget where it's made. Some Latin American country. Um, but I don't remember. But the, the album is in English. It's just that the disc was produced uh, somewhere else. Where was it made? Does it say? It does not say. I don't know. I think I want to say Argentina. I'm not sure. Ooh. I don't know. Oh, I can't show you that. Anyway, 
that was I have a signed record no can I show you that so all right I'm gonna try and show you this this is an amazing amazing thing here but I have to block out my name that's the thing okay so I met I met Curtis Blow. He's a old school rap rapper. And he has a song called Basketball. And it was the 20th anniversary of the release of the song Basketball. So I got the the album. Is this one does not have does it have basketball on it? No, this is not the one with basketball on it. This is the one with the breaks. Anyway, I had him sign this album. I'm gonna show you, it says, love ya and thanks, Curtis Blow. But I'm gonna, I have to block out my name. So, um, and let me just tell you, um, when I met him, it was quite a number of years after this album and he, he was quite a bit older. So, I'm going to put this back in this uh, cardboard because um, I'm trying to keep this in pristine condition. We all know that if you have something signed and the person autographs it to you and it has your name on it, it reduces the resale value, obviously, because if your name is John or Tom or whatever, and you're trying to resell it and it says, thanks, Tom, for a great, you know, meeting, um, it's harder to resell unless you're selling to somebody with the same name as you. But I do not plan to sell that. Um, then I have this picture disc of Marilyn Monroe. This is one side. If you're if you're uh, opposed to nudity, then you probably don't want to see the the B side. So, yes, cover up the eyes of the little childrens. Some more vinyl. This is Pat Benatar. It says demonstration not for sale. It's kind of beat up. I bought it that way at a record shop. Then I have, I found this at a record shop. This has got, this is beat up. This is promotional only, not for sale. The Blues Brothers. Oh, I do have it. Oh my God, I do have it. Stacy Q, two of hearts. I do have two of hearts. Oh my God. This is old school. Okay. Then I have Billy Idol, Whiplash Smile. Some of these are just regular discs. And some of these are very special discs. Like this album I bought for $22. Still in the plastic, it says yellow vinyl. This is the U2 album single of Lemon. This is the remix album. Those are lemons, those are not nipples. Uh, and so, um, it's, on yellow vinyl and then this is blur girls and boys i haven't listened to that song in a long time uh it says the tongue twisting gender confusing multi-format smash featuring featuring remixes by the pet shop boys this is also yellow vinyl look this it was in plastic and I have to put this back in plastic. This is Kate Bush, Rubber Band Girl. This is the, this is the front, this is the back. 
and this was in this was in the sleeve it was from the album the red shoes and that's when i first got into kate bush um i know she's been around for a long time but i did not know of her let's see this is the program from when i went to see rod stewart does this say, it says all rod all night that sounds dirty um I don't know I don't know what tour this was I'm trying to some pretty nice pictures in there Let me see if there's a year on here. It says, with laughing eyes, I do recall. I don't, I don't know what year this was from. I mean, there's, there's a lot of nice pictures of him in here. I don't know what tour this was from. And I don't know what year this is from. And I'm trying to find a year and I don't see one. It doesn't, I cannot find a year on here. How do they print this without a year? I don't know. Oh, this is a picture disc of Rod Stewart for the album um, Blondes Have More Fun. This I had left it in the plastic so long that when I tried to take it out of the plastic, can you see that? It was, uh, it was kind of hard to do. Getting down to the bottom here. Please ignore Malcolm. All right, now I got to put, start putting this stuff back into the box. So here we have some more Depeche Mode. Here's when Martin Gore used to wear his vinyl dress this is a picture disc set this is an interview discs interviews 83 to 85 so let's start putting some of the stuff away let's see here this is u2 on the cover of musician magazine from 1992 Johnny Depp on the cover of Movie Line magazine. Do you guys remember this magazine? This is This was a dollar 95. This is from April April 1993. Do you ever remember what a magazine was a dollar 95? This is the story of Marilyn Manson. This is not a, this is just like a picture book that I picked up somewhere along the way. So then we have, what else do we have? We have a lore magazine. This is, does, is anybody a Mariah Carey fan? 2001. I don't know why I have this horrible marked up magazine from the library, the best in the 90s. Does anybody, is anybody into Christina Aguilera from 19, no, from 2002? No. All right. That's attractive. Okay. All right. I'm going to start putting this stuff back into the box here. And then we're going to put this away for another two years. So, fresh mode, people are people. 
So yeah, this is a lot of what's in here. There's a lot of white stripes stuff that I did not show you. Um, I could make this an hour long video and just show you everything that's in here. Um, I really wanted to do a separate video on Duran Duran. Uh, you want to see, here's, see something? Here's a cassette single. When was the last time you saw a cassette single? This is a cassette single for Shaggy for Old Carolina. This was his first hit song and it's autographed. I wonder how much this thing is worth. Look, I, you know, it's, I look at it now and it's so retro. It's a cassette single. Do you remember when you could go to like the Wiz? Remember that store, the Wiz? And you could buy a cassette single. I remember, I'll tell you as I'm putting stuff away. And it's Depeche Mode the singles tour. Um, I remember when I used to go to the, I'm, I'm just going to show you stuff and, and just not explain what it is because I'm going to tell you a story. So I'm going to show you stuff as I'm putting it away and you can figure out what it is. So I have some Beastie Boy stuff. Anyway, um, I remember when I used to go to this store called, uh, record factory there was a there was a store there was the whiz and then next to it was an independent store called record factory and the bad neighbor and i used to go every week every weekend and we used to go see what they have in the whiz look how, do you think i bought enough copies of keyboard magazine with the fresh mode on the cover how many do i have one two three four one two three four or five, five of the, these. Um, so we used to go, we used to go every week and we would go to the Wiz and we would see what they had. And then we would go to a record factory and we would see who had the best price on whatever it is we were looking for. And the thing about record factory that was great um, which not so much at the Wiz. Um, I'm going to show you some white stripe stuff. So, Record Factory, they would have these promo items, like these promo posters and things. It's the white stripes for, I just don't know what to do with myself. And this is Seven Nation Army. Oh, sorry. Um, so, and then, hardest button to button. Anyway. They used to get these promotional posters and when they were done with them, if they were done with the promotion on whatever album it was, they would sell it to you, um, the poster or the, what they have, it's called a, a poster, an album flat. I have one of those. Um, and they would sell it to you. They would sell you these uh, promo items and I remember I had um, a poster for Def Leppard for Adrenalize. It was the album cover for Adrenalize. Look, I have an extra of Shaggy. So, um, yeah, I had the poster for Adrenalize. I had uh, this promo poster for Bjork when she did this album. Um, I think it was called Post. I'm not sure. Here I have Lady Gaga paparazzi. And it was great. It was great when you could go to uh, an independent music store and be able to get these things, you know? You can't get these anymore. You have to go on eBay. This is Uncut Magazine. This is a great headline. It says, 20 years of sex, smack, and sin. Depeche Mode, Kings of Excess. Yeah, we all know that Dave Gone had a bit of a a drug problem. Do we remember when he did the long hair? This is Details Magazine from 1993. 
yeah that's another thing you know they say never meet your idols because they'll never live up to what you expect of them that's why i'm glad i never met jack white because i have a feeling that he is a dick so i don't know maybe he's a nice person who knows but he just comes off as like i don't know that he would be that nice um this is a poster flat it's a 12 by 12 uh, cardboard advertisement um, for an album. This one happens to be for one of the greatest albums. This is for the Beastie Boys Paul's Boutique. And this has uh, Adam Horowitz outside of some store. So, anyway, we're going to put away some more playbills and stuff. Here's a playbill from um, Phantom of the Opera. Then we have some memorabilia from West Side Story uh, when I went to see that. Again, I was dragged to West Side Story. I did not want to see it. And I had a boyfriend at the time that wanted to go see it. And so he took me to see it. Um, I have some of these like Beastie Boys promotional items. Beastie Boys, The Sounds of Science sticker. Um, and then I have this book, this picture book by Dave Thomas, who's like the founder of Wendy's. On Depeche Mode, I have two of these. I'll show you the picture on a sign. I, I got an extra of it. So when I went to see Dave Gunn, um, I had him sign this picture. Okay, so I have a version of this where it's signed here and it's framed. I just don't know where I put it. I think... It's in the closet because it. I think I hung it up and it fell off the wall. I have to find where I put that thing. So you can imagine that this is a picture of him when he was in his early 20s. And when I had him sign this photo, he was maybe in his late 40s. So it was quite a bit of time it was 2000 so 20 years later so yeah so he was probably in his late 40s yeah so meeting him um i could do a whole story telling you about how i met him and uh he was not what i expected um when i had him sign this photo um he looked down at the photo like and he was He's like, where did you get that from? You know, with his English accent. And I, I said, eBay. And yeah, I think he was a little bit stunned to see himself, you know, such a, an old photo of himself. Because, you know, he, by that time, he had looked more like that. So, yeah. So they say never meet your idols because they never live up to what you expect them to be. So you have to figure this was his first solo album. Um after he had gotten off the drugs and he wanted to prove that he could be a songwriter and he didn't have to live in Martin Gore's shadow and all this kind of stuff. And when I met him, I brought him a dozen roses. I remember I went and I, I bought a special outfit. I went to guess at the mall and I bought these pants that were like they must have been up over $50. And for me, that was like the most expensive pair of pants I had ever bought. Um, but you got to figure this is 20 years ago. So, what was I saying? Yeah, I got a special outfit. I brought him a dozen roses. I was, you know, so excited to meet him. And so stunned to when I... I mean, you got to figure, this was a guy that I idolized for for so many years and, you know, listened to Depeche Mode albums and their videos and their concerts and ever since I was could remember. And it's a strange thing how I got into them. Um, I, you want to hear a story? I used to go to this Blockbuster video and they would play, they would have a video up you know, whether it was a movie or whatever it was. And the girls behind the counter, they were younger. I guess they were, you know, high school age or whatever working age was then. 
and they used to play this DVD. Uh, it was a live concert of Depeche Mode. If you can um, check it out, it's called The World We Live In Live and in Hamburg in Germany. And I fell in love with them from that, um, from that concert. So anyway, when I met him, I brought him a dozen roses. I told him, I love you. And, you know, he was a little bit freaked out, you know, because you got to figure, how do you handle something like that? You know, you just got off the drugs. You're starting a, a new solo album. You're trying to get out of the shadow of this iconic band. And then somebody, you know, professes their worship for you. You got to be a little bit freaked out. So I guess I can understand that. Um, I remember he was very frail, um, like very... He, you know, when you see him on stage in Depeche Mode, he's like this wild man and he's running across the stage and he's all this and that. And then you meet him and he's so quiet and timid and um, just not, not the type of guy that I thought he was going to be. Um, so I just remember I put my arm around him to take the photo and Bad Enabler took the photo. And actually one of the photos of me there was a photo of me online with I think I'm by my I'm with Bad Enabler but I don't know if he's in the photo and it ended up on Getty Images and it was a funny thing because I remember a photographer asked me permission to take my photo of when I gave the dozen roses to Dave Gunn and I never could ever find out where that photo ended up and then like maybe three four five years later um I found it on Getty Images and that's like an image supplying site where um, publications can buy images. And so when I saw it up on Getty Images, I was stunned. Um, yeah, so I, I forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, so I gave him the dozen roses. And I remember putting my arm around him and uh, he was warm. I remember him being very warm. Uh, and uh, I don't mean like warm, like friendly, but I mean like hit body temperature warm. And uh, this is Mojo Magazine. This is Jack White with, who the hell is that? Iggy Pop. So this is going to be all white stripe stuff I'm showing you now. Um, yeah, so I mean, he, he wasn't, like I said, I, I thought he was going to be this super, this super vibrant, um, outgoing guy and he really wasn't he looked like he was more afraid of me than anything else and I for a long time I wondered if it was me like if he was like if I just came off as a scary person I don't really know because then when I met him again I met him again with the band he didn't seem all that friendly then either he he seemed more comfortable meeting people like he wasn't, you know, I guess because the other band members were there. And I have to say, you know, like they didn't really say anything to me. Uh, you know, there I met Martin Gore and I, I had him sign that magazine. And um, I, I just, I don't know. I expected more from them. I expected them to be how I imagined them to be. If you ever watched, they did a music documentary called 101. And... Um, where they take fans on the road with them. They actually did an updated version of 101 where they, um, 101 is when they played the, the show at the Hollywood, was it the Hollywood Bowl? I forget. Um, and they took the fans with them. Yeah. So, anyway. I, I just... Yeah, but that was a long time ago. That was when Alan Wilder was in the band. Anyway, so, yeah, they say, they say never meet your idols. And like I said, I've met quite a few famous people. Um, some of them have been nice. Some of them have been not so nice. I can tell you, Boy George is not a nice person when you meet him. Um, he is very not nice. Um, who else? Meatloaf. Meatloaf was actually really nice, I have to say. Uh, well, Shaggy was really nice because it was like the beginning of his career. So he was super nice. Um, 
Davy Jones was really nice. Crystal Gale was nice. Um, who else? I don't remember. I haven't, you know, I haven't been doing that in a long time. I've stopped going to concerts. I've stopped going to um, Broadway shows. And pop trash. I'm not in I'm not into collecting like I used to be. So that's that. I'm almost done putting all the stuff back into the trunk where it will stay. Here's a Wired with Beastie Boys on it. This is, what year is this? 2004. I think I have, I think this is a copy of 45 of No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Let me see. Yeah, look at, oh, wow. This brings back memories. Look, Beastie Boys. No sleep till Brooklyn and she's crafty. Wow. Yeah, I never did get a chance to meet the Beastie Boys. I did see them in concert and I did um, get to take a picture, a very close up picture of MCA. Um, and it was before he passed away. So yeah, this is MCA. This is Adam Horowitz, and this is, so this is Ad Rock, MCA, and Mike D, uh, Michael Diamond. Anyway, yeah, I, I saw them in concert before he passed away, so I was very happy that I, uh, I was able to do that. And what was I going to say? Yeah, I didn't really get to talk to him, so I don't know if he's nice or not nice. Um, as far as meeting Ad Rock and Mike D, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if they, I don't know. If, it's hard to tell what's an act and what's the actual person. Okay, so that is all of this stuff pretty much that's in the case here. I think I showed you pretty much everything except these scrapbooks uh, that I have, uh, that I made like this one this is handmade and this has all clips of the white stripes this is probably worth quite a bit of money now um this is back in the days when i actually would sit and craft and do things so yes i have a a scrapbook for each of my bands here one for white stripes one for beastie boys and that i made and one of course for depeche mode but the Depeche Mode one is probably the most empty because um, I have mostly full magazines. I didn't really do clips. Okay. Um, let me know if you want me to do more musical memories or if this was boring as all hell. Uh, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this musical memory trip down memory lane through my... My foot locker, my hot pink foot locker of memories. So remember to comment, rate, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Shopping and Sense, and I will see you all in a future video. But until then, goodbye everyone out there in YouTube land.